Um, first of all, uh, from last night, last night we had um, salvage unit had a tape attached to the stern of the Rena. This vessel was keeping an eye on the state of the vessel. Overnight, the um, list increased from about the 12 degrees up to around 18 degrees. The tug had to detach at that stage because it was unsafe for the tug to remain in the area um, with the threat of containers falling. So the tug removed itself out of the area and went off to a safe distance. We had no visibility of the vessel at that stage. This morning we undertook a survey flight around the vessel and when we came back it was evident that there was deformation in the vessel. Um, and what you'll see here is some um, diagrams coming up which show the extent of that damage to the vessel. You'll see here that there have been a number of containers lost off the vessel. When we went out this morning there were around 25, 27 containers had been lost. Over the day more containers have been coming off in, um, in, in groups. And you'll see some of these um, pictures here where there are containers in the water. You can see one off there to the left. And so you'll see a large number of containers floating around. The containers, most of the containers that have come off the stern of the vessel are empty containers. And so they're quite buoyant and they're floating. We're aware that some of those containers have reached Motiti Island. Um, but the majority, from what we're seeing, are still in the region of the vessel. When we came onto the vessel, you could see that there was deformation along the sides of the, uh, the vessel. And what I'll do is I'll pass over to Captain John Walker. Um, but just to let you know, John's been on that vessel um, continuous, nearly continuously for quite some time. And was one of the last people evacuated off the vessel um, before um, last night, wasn't it? And so he's only just had time to get um, back off the vessel and start doing some of the work. Salvage operations are continuing and will continue until they can. Salvage crews are dead keen to get back onto that vessel and to get the oil out. They are championing the to get out there. I'll pass on to John to give you a description of some of the damage. Uh, thank you very much, Bruce. Um, if you go to the next two slides, please. The next one. <coughs> the next one after that, please. You will notice there on this slide here, there is a fold in way of number three cargo hold on the port side. Now, what has happened with this vessel, the forward end of the vessel has been uh, has run aground, um, and it's held there, possibly right, by rocks in the hull, and particularly by the weight of this vessel. It's pinned that section of the vessel on the ground. The after part of the vessel is uh, in deeper water. That part retains buoyancy. Over the last few days, the sea state is coming in from the northeast has created a heavy swell which has caused that after part of the vessel to move, creating a uh, torsion effect in the hull. What we see here is a fatigue area on, this, on number three cargo hold. If you go to the next slide, please. On the opposite side of this, on the starboard side of the vessel, you will see just below the white MSC. It's not that one. Um, it is a white container. Is it the white container? Just below the white MSC container, you'll see a crack in the hull on the starboard side. That is also in wave number three. <coughs> that crack, when we saw it this morning in the heavy season swell, was opening and shutting. That means the after part of the vessel is detaching from the fore part of the vessel because of the movement. Now, there are implications on this. The, um, uh, what we have to be careful of is this after part of the vessel actually sinking. We would like this vessel, the after part, to stay on the reef. That gives us access to deal with the oil, deal with the containers as much as we possibly can. All this is weather dependent to get access to the vessel. As Bruce is saying, the salvers are chomping at the bit to get back on board to, to, to certainly, first thing, to, to focus on removing the remaining oil on board. What we have done, this particular crack is in way of number three starboard fuel oil tank. We had just started to try to uh, remove that oil, transfer it to a, a tank further aft, number five starboard. Uh, just started the pumping, and then the vessel started to uh, uh, started to move. The aft end of the vessel started to move quite uh, uncomfortably. It got so bad on uh, yesterday morning. 
we had to leave the vessel, all the crew had to leave the vessel and salvage leave the vessel. The other side of the tank, uh, other side of the ship, where the, if you can go back one slide, this fold is in way of number three port fuel oil tank. We were able to transfer that oil from that tank to one further aft, number five port heavy fuel oil tank. Had we not transferred it, this would be leaking out as well, but we've transferred that back to number five fuel oil tank, five port fuel oil tank. We've done uh, overflights today, and this crack is actually getting worse. The latest overflight at noon today shows that this crack is getting worse. It's actually like a piece of steel, the steel has given way, the crack is open. What we have discovered during this latest flight is that the, uh, we believe that the fuel oil that we transferred is still in number five port heavy fuel oil tank. We've done that using thermal imaging cameras, and we can see the oil is hot, the tank is hot. This oil is always heated up in order to pump it, so the, uh, it was at a hotter temperature than the outside temperature. So uh, it shows the general higher level of temperature in that particular, from the thermal Im imaging in that particular tank, shows it's still there, as it is in the other tanks around the engine room. The effort now has to be to remove this oil and the oil around in the engine room from the vessel. We, as I say, we would like to, this, this part of the vessel to stay there, then we can deal with it. That will require uh, a reduction in the sea state. If it does break away, um, uh, it is very unlikely that this thing will flow, this section will flow. And it is easier to deal with it, obviously, on a, on a shallow reef than uh, if it sinks in deep water. So the, what the, the salvers are trying to do now, if you can go back, um, if you just keep going back to the slides, I'll just stop at the slides. Keep reversing the slides. You've stopped there. This slide here shows the containers that fell off. This morning when we flew around, there was a whole series of containers around the after end of the vessel. Um, uh, what we're trying to do, we've been trying to do, we've been concentrating to get a tug to connect to the after end of this vessel. If you go forward now, a few slides please. There. Stop there. This is just the, the latest photograph that has come in. The tug has just successfully con connected to the aft end of the vessel. And you'll notice the sea state is reducing there from the previous photograph I showed you. Now, what the intention is, is to try, if possible, to hold up that, that section on the reef, keep it there on the reef. It is uh, very difficult to do. Obviously, the displa displacement of this particular um, part of the ship is very, very heavy indeed, and we're not sure what buoyancy remains in the ship. But certainly there must be some buoyancy because this part has been moving, moving around, creating fatigue. So what they try to do is to keep this uh, section of the vessel on the, uh, on the reef. If they cannot, they'll have to try to tow it to, uh, to shallow water uh, before it sinks. Because it's easier to deal with this uh, vessel uh, with the oil on board, remaining on board in, in shallow water rather than deep water. Before we left the vessel, we uh, blanked the tanks. Try to blank all the tanks, the pipes going to these particular tanks that contain the fuel oil. Um, this is only really effective if the vessel sinks and it stays in an upright condition. Obviously, if there's a break up of the vessel, we're going to have a problem with the oil coming out. But that is what we're trying to do. We've blanked off and try to make sure that this, uh, um, that try to retain the oil as much as we possibly can in the vessel. Therefore, we can come back and try to remove it. That is, that is the situation at the moment. The salvers are, are, are out there at the moment. Uh, we have three tugs now uh, being mobilised to get out to the vessel. But the, the real difficulty is, as you can see from this particular picture here, is it is very dangerous on board. Those containers that you're looking at there, they're all moving. Everything is moving. So access around the vessel is very, very difficult indeed. But that is the situation we have now. <coughs>